feels like my butt's gonna vomit. So is that different than diarrhea? D Tony, no, it's just my stomach. It's my stomach that feels nauseous. Oh, what, oh, what else oh, would it I be? Wasn't, I wasn't sure. What like, else would it be? I don't know. People's bodies are really different. God. So I no. <laughs> earlier today, I was in the bathroom on my phone, sitting on the toilet after having taken a shit. And I was just browsing my phone for like hours and hours and hours like I often do after I get back from work. And uh, a housemate walked in because I, I was sitting on there for hours and hours and hours, even though I had the door closed, but I didn't lock it. And so I, I thought to myself, oh, dang it, why don't people just knock? And then just like a couple minutes ago, I went downstairs and just blithely opened the bathroom door on the middle floor and then walked in on someone brushing their teeth. So. Oh, well, at least that was just that. Uh, oh, no, no. I mean, brushing their teeth. Wink, wink. Oh, while, while taking a shit? Oh, at. Wow, that'd be so efficient. Uh, I hope Gil's <laughs> alright. You worried about him? You make it sound like I'm some emotionless robot. You can be hard to read. I wouldn't worry about Gil so much, though. There's three things I know for certain about him. First, he can take care of himself. Second, you can sincerely trust him. And third? He absolutely hates bell pepper. He does? I've seen him even reject food that has been in contact with it. Man, what a baby. Unless he's allergic or something. He's not. Man, what a baby. <laughs> How did you meet such a guy? He showed up in the door of the bar. He what? Well, it was shortly after the whole incident with Robert and the levitation potion. Right. Levitation potion. It was a slow day and he just showed up at the bar. I offered him a drink, but he said he didn't have money on him. I couldn't leave him alone, so I pretty much gave him the drinks for free. And after a couple, he broke down crying. He... huh? I don't know what he did, but he was really, really regretting it. He wanted a second <laughs> chance or whatever, and I told him if I could wash Tony, him. stop! I told him if he could wash himself, uh, I'd find him a job. And I'll be damned, he looked totally different the next day. Damn. Tony? I'm drinking beer! You're going to make Jill black out. Oh. She's had four beers in like ten minutes. Uh, well, it's unclear. The passage of time is unclear. I tried and failed to find out everything about him. So I decided to take him at face value. I judged him from what he did as an employee. And aside from the occasional sudden escapade, he's been as loyal as loyal gets. I return the favor in kind, covering his ass from time to time. Uh, sometimes literally. What surprises me is that you took him in so easily. I can take care of myself, and I always kept an eye on him. And besides, after the whole Robert thing, I couldn't ignore someone that desperate so easily. I see. You've made the bar more lively yourself, you know. How so? Well, with the regulars you've earned, of course. Like that blonde titty hacker. I can't remember her name. Alma? I was gonna say Armitage. Well, she's hot. I'll give her that much. She's also a nice person in general, but damn, she's hot. Oh, Jill! Gay! Gay! Are you alright, Jill? Yeah, why? It's weird to see you say so openly that someone's hot. What? Even you can see she has a hot body, boss. You'll find no objections here. I mean, I'd be lying if I said I hadn't thought about taking her to a room and... Oh my god. Oh my god. Jill, you sure you aren't drunk? I am. I mean, I'm sure I'm not. I mean... <clears throat> but those are thoughts I leave to myself. I don't think I could handle her in a relationship. <laughs> she has... weird standards. That and she's as straight as straight gets. Is she? She's still a lovely person, though. That she became a regular is a blessing. It is almost straight? Okay. I don't I don't believe that. I don't believe it either. Any regular is a blessing when you get down to it. There's also that sex worker robot girl. Ah, uh, Dorothy. She intrigues me though. I've seen lots of sex workers over the years, and she seems pretty giddy. It's not that she likes her job, but rather that she takes to it with such childish excitement. I've kinda noticed that too. But then again, Lelum can be weird. You think? Leelam operate in some really foreign logic. I mean, they don't really share out of 
they don't really share our fear of mortality. Even if their bodies are destroyed, their minds are already backed up in the collective source. God, that's kind of horrifying in a way. Yeah. If they lose an arm, they can reattach it or replace it. Depending on the circumstance, they might not even feel pain at all. It's not like they haven't attained human-like emotions, like fear or love, but they are different. Like a different culture, if you must. Hmm. I didn't see it that way. Aside from that, Dorothy is a DFC-72. It's a social interactions model or something. Leland get positive reinforcement straight from their bodies if they're fulfilling their main purpose, so... I'm guessing she gets a built-in push whenever she's in a meaningful or challenging social social interaction. Interesting. The name Leland is a bit weird, though. It is? You'd expect them to be called bots or dolls, but Leland doesn't convey the image of automatons. <laughs> automatons? Automatons. No. Uh, uh. Just a tip, bots and dolls are considered slurs by them. Bot is akin to calling them a word that I'm not very comfortable with saying, and doll is like calling them fake. Thanks for the advice. That aside, do you know why they're called Leland? As far as I know, because they all come from a bigger AI called Lilith. And Lilam are Lilith's offspring in Jewish folk folklore. Oh, cool. Hey, speaking of names, why don't like why don't you like being called by your full name? I have no idea what you're talking about. Don't act stupid. Back when you first transferred, I called you Julian, and you almost tore me a new one with your glare. I think it's Julianne. Damn it. See? Like that. It's no big secret, but it's one of those things that feels silly when you say it out loud. Try me. Well, did you ever watch Modern War Model Warrior Julianne? Not all of it, but my little sister's a big fan of the reruns. Back when I was in elementary school, I was a huge fan of the show. I had everything, from the dolls, to the costumes, to the lunchboxes. It didn't help that it was one of those shows that got strapped literally everywhere. I saw a couple of episodes once. They were really nice. It was beyond nice. The show's about a model who can transform into an armor-clad magic knight. She fights demons born from greed and vanity. How the show presented Jules hating her job because it invited enemies. And yet still found solace in trying to be a role model? Hell, the main character wasn't a kid. Julianne was an adult that became younger when transformed. That's weird. That is weird. I'd say it was a pretty ambitious kid's show. Even by today's standards. Just the fact that her enemies were literally issues dealing with beauty standards of body image. Challenging as fuck. <laughs> Whoa, you got excited there. And that is the problem. Back then, I was obsessed with Jules. I sang the songs, dressed like her. I could even recite full chapters. Something tells me you still can. That's beside the point. It was nice while I was in elementary school, but then I went to middle school. And what a surprise, tweens are jackasses. They went out of their way to tease me about the things I did back then. I don't hold it against Jules. I always hold my grudge against those fuck jobs. Sounds rough. You know how most girls worry about their thighs at that age? I worried about jerk asses singing the theme tune of the show mocking me. Anyways, every time someone calls me Julianne or Jules, I instinctively react negatively. Pavlov would be proud of me. I never talk about it because I find the whole thing too silly in retrospect. And yet it affects you even today. There's nothing wrong with it though. It's actually kind of reasonable. I sure hope so. Come to think of it, what kind of kid were you boss? When I was a toddler, I was the kind to always fight with kids bigger than me. Then puberty happened and I became the Merriam-Webster definition of shallow jerkwad. Around the time I turned 16, I realized what an idiot I was and went on to become who I am today. And the less I talk about those years from 12 to 15, the better. Fair enough. So Jill, what kind of guy was your grandpa? He was rough around the edges. The kind of guy that means well even if he says otherwise. He seemed to have a soft spot for me though. One moment, he was congratulating my dad by berating him a little. And the next he was playing with me. 
My dad worked a lot, and my mom was always traveling, so I spent most of my childhood with him. Can I ask how he died? Out of old age. My dad says his last words were something like, Fucking scientists. Created talking mannequins, but they still can't let you upload your brain. Oh no. <laughs> Why the question? I'm curious about you. Really curious. I just realized that even though we see each other almost every day, I know very little about you. Oh. From what you tell me, though, seems your grandpa's personality rubbed off on you a bit. I've heard that one since I was a kid, actually. You know, boss, I'm a bit curious about your circle of friends. What kind of people do you have in it? Keep in mind, you're included in this circle, too, so any insults you hurl will apply right back to you. Anyways, I have this friend I've known for a long time. A red-headed, glasses-wearing gun nut called Iris. The one you called for the helmet thing? That one. She's managing a BTC bar in Panama right now, if I remember correctly. She's managing a bar, too? I got the idea from her, actually. Oh. It's called N1RV Anna A. Wait, Nirvana? <laughs> yeah. And if you thought this city was dangerous, you should see the people she has to deal with there. Piracy ain't nothing to fuck with. Anne means it's an annex to another business. What else does she do there? I think the bar was originally her hotel's bar. She moved the bar to its own building elsewhere and opened Nirvana in the hotel instead. Weird, Weird decision. I believe she says she wanted a place away from the noisy rich tourists that go to the hotel. So that bar is her woman cave. Woman cave. That aside, let's see. Friends, friends. I guess there's also my little sister, but that's a given. Oh, there's also my old partner from when I was with the Neo San Francisco police force. Oh, the Neo San Francisco? Wait, hold on. Is it? Is this about to reference uh, read-only memories? I have no idea. I'm pretty sure Lexi... Okay, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure Lexi is from this other game called Read-Only Memories that this game takes place in the same universe of, made by different developers. Oh. And it's a pretty good game. Oh, okay. That's all. Yep, that's it. But thanks, thanks, Tony. So wow. I, anyways, I, I might be wrong, but I think that's who Lexi is. Good old Lexi. Should, uh, should give her a call sometime. Wait, you were in the what? I've done lots of things, Jill. I spent a short time collaborating with the police force. I've been a wrestler, an MMA fighter, chimney cleaner, lumberjack, pet shop attendant, corporate mascot. Corporate what? I still see my face on some websites from time to time. <laughs> Anyways, aside from you, Gil, my sis, Iris, and Lexi, hmm, I guess there's a lot of people that don't want to see me in harm's way. Mostly because they're the ones that want to hurt me. What about you? I guess I have acquaintances here and there. Wow, we're really down in these beers. Back at- <gasps> Oh, we... look at this! I made our face red! We are really downing these beers, Tony. I think there is a single person who's responsible for that. Oops. I'll maybe leave it at this for now. Yeah. Back at home in college, I went out a lot. But it felt more like going out was the pleasure rather than the people involved. Aside from you and Gil, my closest friend since moving here is Alma. Oh, and Dorothy. I mean, sure, there's always four, but that cat's a hermit that refuses to go out. And you know, he's a cat. Hey, a cat's fine too, you know. Hey boss, what will you do when the bar closes? I don't know. Maybe I'll take a friend's offer of working with her. I was also thinking about going back home and helping with things there. Or maybe going traveling for a while. I see. Oh, but don't worry. Bureaucracy's slow as fuck, so they won't close the bar for quite a while. Better enjoy being there while you can. Yeah, maybe. Will you be visiting me in whatever bar I end up working in? I have a bone to pick with the guy that supervises the bar I'm playing to get you transferred to. I go there even though I have virtually no reason to. With you there, I'd have something pleasant to look forward to. Um... You're sending me to someone you have problems with? If I have to trust another bar owner, it's certainly him. He's actually a pleasant boss from what I've seen. The fact that he and I have a tendency to go at each other's throats is an unrelated matter. I'll trust you on that one then. Don't worry, maybe I can get you a bracelet made out of wood pieces from the bar's counter or something. Um, 
We'll see. <laughs> That's a little weird. Uh, hey, I'll tell you what. When the bar closes, let's both take a vacation. Go on a trip. That'll clean your mind a bit. Yeah, maybe. Wow. Wow, look at this cutscene that's, you know, from the intro, but still a cutscene. Yeah. Like. It's Glitch City. It is Glitch City. Wow. <gasps> and it's, it's snowing. It's a Christmas Ots Christmas game. Oh, I, I thought it was Dandruff. <sighs> Tony. <gasps> Chapter two. two. How many chapters are there? Christ, what have we gotten ourselves into, Tony? <sighs> That's all right. <laughs> God, our electricity bill will be sent out on the 24th. Please make sure you have the $8,000 needed. So, so we need to save up. That's five days. Yeah, we need to save up. So, what do you want to buy in the shop? No. What? What? Uh, no. Okay, here. Let's let's read some of these uh, before we close off the episode. Oh, boss left the hoodie anyway. <sighs> oh no, Mal, are you actively falling asleep? No. Okay. Yeah, don't don't. Know oh, let's start at the voice. one at one or two. One or two. Uh, I think we can only start with do two. Media is still awfully quiet about it. Augmented Eye talked about it, but very briefly. Maybe somebody lost their job due to that one rogue article. It was from Kim. She's always trying to write serious shit, but I think AE got tired of her. Fucking shame. So all we'll get is clickbait from now on. Gonna get worse at the very least. White knights say there's a lot of people inside the building. At least three people already dead. How? Is someone there shooting people? Looks like it was the security from the building, but I've got no details yet. Sounds weird as fuck. Come on, Insider Anon. You've got to give us more. Doing my best here. Thanks, Based Anon. Uh, all right. Explosion registered. And media still quiet about it. Can confirm there's an explosion, but it looks like it was just one of them. So there's more bombs? Not just one? That's right. Do we have any clues on who's doing this? I'm hearing from several sources that this is a group, a new one looking to overthrow the government. No names have been mentioned, and it looks like it's not a group, but just one person who set up all this. It's pretty ballsy. And this is, I like how we're talking like about this almost as if we're like two like commentators at a news desk. Like, yeah. like, like that's pretty ballsy. And just like this rumor around here, how? Like, oh, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I guess I'm just marveling at how much, how great I think we are oh, right now. Oh, wow. We are pretty great. Yeah, we are pretty great. Uh, Alice Rabbit might be involved. How? A hacker is helping out hostages to escape, and they're suspecting of Alice. Huh, someone doing stupid shit on the internet is actually being useful. That's that's gotta be Alma. It's gotta be. It's I gotta be so. Alma. I hope it's Alma. Oh, I like Alma. Can confirm the situation has finally reached its end. The attacker was shot dead, but a huge amount of data was released from servers all around the world. Remember the leaks from Alice? Those were nothing compared to this. Proof of corruption, money laundering, espionage... It's actually pretty unsettling. Damn. The file is available from approximately 60,000 sources, terabytes that contain all operations from the Glitch City government and White Knight operations. It seems the ultimate goal from the attacker was not to blow up the bank, but lead hostages towards the servers inside the bank, which had the files under several layers of physical security. That shit sounds whack. How do you even make a plan this complex? No idea, but that's what some of the witnesses are telling the police. Okay, it looks like I have to leave, but I'll try to write down all the details for a future post. Gonna need some time, though. Godspeed, Anon, thanks. Huh, alright. So we have some primary-ass plot going on in the background. Augmented Eye, there's nothing new. Oh, I know. I know it's it would have the little, the little thing, but I just wanted to look at it. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's start from the top. Uh, Danger, what is that? Danger slash you? Danger slash you's admin has been arrested that's, again. That's the board we were just reading. Oh, so by Lana Smithy. Famous hacker Alice Rabbit graced the popular text board Danger You with a new threat, which resulted in the arrest of the site's admin, known as Furfur, -fur for a second time. We have no details to give other than that uh, he was arrested as part of an ongoing investigation of Mal falling asleep constantly. Cybercrime unit's Lizette Blanc told the augmented eye during a call. We are now busy tracking down the message that appeared yesterday. When inquired about the arrest, Furfur would only respond with a calm, Not this shit again. Alright, alright. Alright. Uh, oh. Nano Camo is now making smart underwear. If underwear you can change with a voice command was something you really wanted in your life, Nano Camo has you covered. 
already providing consumer versions of their advanced nano machine fabric. They plan to release a line of underwear mm. that can change its look with a spoken word. No more stains in your white panties. Just change its color to black and you will barely notice. Gross. That would change the smell, though. They're not that advanced. We expect an increase in sales next year thanks to this innovative product, a PR representative told the Augmented Eye. I'm already user them, using them. Super comfy, if you ask me. What a weird thing to say as someone who's hawking like some new thing. Mm -hmm. Super comfy, if you ask me. Mal, did you just... Did you just kiss your pop filter? No, I moved it forward with my nose. I see. Uh, GSF, the January 4th card announced 66 American Kid and Giant Yusuke headlining. Uh, the blood... Wow, these are all by Lana Smithy. Yeah, they sure are. Uh, did we meet her? No. Which one? Hmm. I imagine we either will meet her or I don't know. The blood feud between uh, Giant Yusuke and... Yusuke! That's correct. I am monolingual. Uh, the blood feud between Giant Yusuke and 66 American Kid will reach its climax this January 4th at the annual GSF Dome event. But it's not the only match of the night. Other interesting bouts feature great workers such as the Great D the Great Donkey Kong and Errants. Full card below. 66. Uh, okay. Wait, wait, wait. Red Comet Jr. versus Nagisa? <gasps> wait a second. Red Comet Jr.? Yeah. Is, is that our boss? Our boss is Red Comet. I don't... Who's Red Comet Jr.? Mm, I don't know. Oh. I don't know. Here, let's let's uh oh, save let's, the game. Let's back up our life. Yeah, let's save the game real quick. Mm. And then we're gonna get that. We're gonna buy that. No, Tony, we're stop wasting all of our money. Alright, thanks for watching the video, everybody. If you enjoyed the Tony video, stop! Please hit the subscribe button. Tony stop! We also have a Patreon you can go check out. It's in the end card or in the video. Oh my god. Bye everybody. Bye. Tony, we don't have any money anymore. Oops.